Hey guys, my name is Igor and I would like to show you how to make a repeatedly good coffee. In this video I will present different elements of a good coffee, different influences that interfere with making a good coffee. So this video will be rather rather lengthy. I will go into detail some, some, uh, in some places to explain th certain things. On the other hand, I will make another video uh, where I will show how to go through the process speedily. So once you understand all the, all the things that go into the good coffee, uh, you will be able to go uh, to go quickly through the process. Uh, when I when I make coffee for myself, it takes me about five minutes from the from the counter. That is uh, almost clean. I have some things already prepared. Uh, until uh, I make my coffee and I drink it uh, and I make my counter again clean. Okay, I will I will use the area press area press for the for the coffee because this is the area press uh, because I think this is the superb superb way of making coffee. As you can see, I set it up. Normally, I have it here. Show this, please. I have it set up like this on a shelf. As you can see, this is very practical. It stands up here, and this is the area press. I will show you later how to clean, clean it, and how to set it up like this. So here there are all the basic elements of the area press, the plunger, and the chamber. This is the scoop for taking coffee. This is the stirrer. When I, you will see later, I stir coffee with this. And this is the uh, metal filter and the filter cap and the funnel. Okay, let's start with the, with water. Uh, water is a very important element in 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 making coffee. If you have a water that is too clean, uh, the distilled water is on the one uh, extreme. Uh, the chemical process that starts where you pull water onto the onto the coffee is too weak, so you get under extracted coffee, so because the, there are not enough minerals in the water to to enable the process, the chemical process. On the other hand, if you take a tap water or if you take a bottle water, it's got about 500 totally dissolved solids in it, which is too much. And the chemical process then is too strong, and you get over extracted coffee, which is bitter. The point is, if you browse through the internet, you will get data that says uh, the best water is about 100 to 150 totally dissolved solids in the water. So how do I get this? I have here, I regularly drink the distilled water, so I make distilled water for myself, and I use a bottle, this bottle. This bottle has two markings in it. I use uh, regular tap water because the tap water here is quite good, quite okay. There is no chlorine in it, at least not to the extent that you can feel it. They say that the chlorine is the what that kills the water. So I will put my water, tap water here, un until the first mark. Okay. I'm assuming that this is this tap water has about 500 totally dissolved solids, and I add the still water. up to the second marking. So I'm diluting the tap water in this way in proportion probably approximately one to three. So I'm coming from let's say 500 totally dissolved solids down to 100 to 150. So this is my water and I use this water, I keep it in this bottle. I use this water now to make coffee. Okay, I have to clean this a little bit. Okay, what I will do today is I will make an, uh, a bit larger espresso than normally, about 80 milliliters. This is how I uh, how I like it. Of course, you can you can uh, make your own amounts. But uh, first, what I do is I take a cup. This cup takes about 80 milliliters. And I take a, a larger cup in which I will use the air press. I do this because this one is too small for air press. What I do with this is I heat it up. I use micro oven for this, but you can also use hot water for it. In my experience, I have to do this for uh, about a minute, minute at ten, and I will start it later. 
and it's just quite hot enough, we will see later, uh, how it influences the temperature of the coffee. So let's go back to the water. If I want to make 80 milliliters of coffee, I need to use about 100 milliliters of water because about 20 gets lost in the, in the pack of, of coffee. I use these markings, I use also AeroPress to measure my, my water and I have come to realize that if I take the plunger out to exactly this marking, I can use this rim to measure my water. Let's see, I will use now the scale to, to show that this is about 100 milliliter of water. So if you're using your own quantities, just measure up some water and remember where where it is on the scale, on the, as you can see, this is now exactly 100 milliliter. I pulled it up to the rim. And so when I go, go through the process quickly, I just pull out the plunger up to the, up to here and pour the water and pour the water into the kettle. Okay. What I do next is I extend the plunger a little bit more. So when I put in the coffee, I have some space to stir the coffee. Otherwise the coffee gets up to here, especially if it's very fresh and if there is a cream, the water will go up to here, uh, the coffee will go up to here and it's quite difficult to stir without uh, spilling it. Okay? So much about coffee, this is weights. Another important aspect of coffee is its temperature once you pour it o over the water. In espresso machines it's 92 degrees Celsius. In AeroPress, it is said to be uh, more tasty coffee if you go from 80 to 85, so a little bit cooler, but it's up to, up to the taste. We'll just use the thermometer here to monitor the heating and to use the exact temperature. As you can see now, it's room temperature, 25 uh, Celsius, degrees Celsius or uh, 78 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. What's next? I have my cups prepared in the, in the microwave to heat it up. I have my water. What's missing? We'll use this scale later on to show that uh, it is about 80 milliliters of water. Uh, the next is coffee. Okay, you can use any beans, the fresher the better. And, uh, aha, I use, I use the unground coffee, so beans, and I grind it myself just before I make the coffee. For this purpose I use this Turkish uh, grinder which is perfect for me because I can make just one portion of coffee, grind it, use it and then I can make I can take a different coffee. With larger grinders you have to, there, there is a container and then there is always uh, some re residue in the grinder so you can't really readily switch coffees and this way I can make one coffee for myself and another 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 coffee just right after that for for guests or for my partner okay so I use the scoop and uh, for this purpose I will show you that if I use the scoop the same as with water I have come to learn that this is my quantity this is about now 11 to 12 grams of coffee so I'm using 11 to 12 grams of coffee for about 100 milliliters of water. This is my, my mixture, but this is how, just how I like it. You can make it stronger or less strong. I will just put it on the scale. This is a very precise scale, a different one, that uh, shows precise grams. Just to show you, just a second, okay, just to show you that this is about... Okay, this is now a bit more, so this coffee is going to be a bit stronger, but never mind. Uh, if you want to be totally repeatable, of course, you will have to scale it. You will have to weigh your coffee exactly to 12 or 11 or whatever. So, I put this here. So, now everything is almost set for the process to begin. I, I'll just set this aside. Okay, so, where are we? We have here our air press ready. Here is the coffee ready to be ground. Uh, here is the stove, the water, temperature and microwave. Now I can start everything. It takes about a minute and a half to heat up this, this water. So this one starts first. This one is on. We will see 
while I grind the coffee how this temperature will rise, I start this microwave and I start the grinding. Of course, how you grind a pure coffee, this is another aspect of uh, and a very important one of making a good coffee. It, you can make it, uh, uh, you can grind it fine or you can grind it coarse, uh, but you have to find your own idea. It is said for the AeroPress, it is about as for espresso, so uh, or a little bit coarser. I set this grinders in such a way, we'll, we'll see how it grinds later on when I'm finished. But this is again the matter of preference. The more you grind it, the more the more coffee will get extracted. The less, the, the more coarse it is, and at the same time in water, the, the less extracted the coffee will will be. As you can see now, this is already up to 50 degrees. 50 degrees. This is 125, 126. Okay, we still have a little bit time. Okay. Well, my coffee now is ground. I take the funnel. And I pour this inside. Okay, I clean this a little bit. Just a second, just a second, I will show this. Okay, now you can see, if the camera goes clo comes closer, you can see now how, how coarse it's ground or how fine, to my opinion. These are my cups now, already heated up, very quite hot. And the coffee is ready, and now you see the temperature. The temperature is now 82. I will go for the purpose of this video now to 92. Just to show you how quickly then it cools down and how, how much time it takes to cool down. So, we are almost there. Okay. This is my temperature. I put a coffee. You will see how much cream I get here because this is a very fresh and very quality coffee. So it's a lot of cream, and now you can see why I had to extend a little bit the funnel, uh, the, the plunger. I take the stirrer now, I stir this very quickly. So all the coffee, as you can see from the side, that all the coffee is properly dipped in the water, and the chemical process starts well. Okay, this is it. My coffee is already made, I put on the filter and the filter cap and we are ready to make the pressure. So I'm using the extra cup, the larger one. Well, first reason is that my coffee cup is too small and the second reason is if I take a, another cup, coffee cup which is large enough and I press directly into it, you will see the walls are almost, it looks like if they are dirty. As you can see here, camera you see this? This doesn't look very, very nice if you if you bring this to the table, coffee that is dirty like this. So this is another. Then um, uh, now I will have to show the how much coffee we got. Okay, zero grams. I put this. It's seventy-eight. Seventy-eight grams of coffee, or eighty milliliters, approximately, and this is it. What I will show you now is the temperature of this coffee, because I had it, uh, my cups heated up uh, beforehand. This coffee is now very hot, quite hot, almost seventy degrees Celsius, or one hundred fifty-five uh, Fahrenheit. The ideal temperature for me is sixty-two degrees Fahrenheit or that is I believe 145 Fahrenheit. We'll see we have another couple of minutes for this. Just enough to clean my AeroPress and I will show you how to do this now. The coffee is now cooling down. I take off the filter. I use this pack. I, I keep these packs of coffee because this is supposedly very well, very good if you grow tomatoes Put this on the on the where you on the ground or where you grow tomatoes and tomatoes will be delicious once they grow up. The only thing I use is my hand for this because it seems to be enough. I have used this AeroPress for let's say six months now and it's almost as as new. Okay, my cup is clean, my filter cup. I use only fingers to clean the filter. 
uh, and you have uh, the feeling under your fingers just uh, what you need to know that it's clean. So now to dry it up. Now you will you will see how I set it up in order to be very simple to set it up on the shelf. So this is now. I'm drying it up, all the elements, all the bits and pieces. The air press I put in here, the scoop, the stirrer, and the air press is now ready to go on the shelf. I put it up here, and this is finished. My cup gets cleaned. Okay, I spilled here something which is not very nice. And now, as you can see, I'm finished with the coffee. Let's see the temperature. The temperature now is, in my drinking, exactly 62 degrees. That's the hottest that for me for drinking. I know that if it's 62 and a half, that's about 145. Uh, this temperature I can drink it immediately and it is well for me uh, down to 58 or 135 Fahrenheit. Okay, I put the thermometer aside and as you can see the counter is clean and my coffee is ready. I hope you like this video and uh, remember there, there is or there will be another video where I go through this process as quickly as possible and I will show you that it takes only three to four or five minutes for doing it and what is the most important thing once you have all these little details under your, under your skin the process is swift and you get repeatedly very good coffee to enjoy.